And welcome back to Meeting of the Minds. Today, we're here with the great Lehigh coach, Fran Troy. And thank you for joining us, coach. Gene, thanks for having me. It's uh, fun stuff that you guys are doing. And it's a great service to uh, all the sports world. Absolutely happy to do it. Now, Lehigh was always a team that we competed against in all sports. I was at Rutgers University for three years, University of Pennsylvania for two years, and Lehigh was always a stumbling block. Lehigh is good at all sports and the University of Steps and Hills. So that makes you tough. Well, you know, they get a good workout to just walk in to and from class. They do. I've been to some Lehigh camps back when I was in um, probably eighth, ninth, and 10th grade. It was good stuff back in the days of the great Greg Strobel. I guess we give him a shout out right away. Um, may he rest in peace. Great man. Sure. Yeah. Greg is, uh, well, honestly, he was my, uh, my dearest coaching friend. He was a mentor for me. We started on the exact same day, May, to, May the 1st, uh, 1995. Yeah. I met him in the, uh, in the waiting room at Human Resources. And uh, I, I was I was very depressed afterwards because I thought I was a real upbeat person. But, you know, after meeting Greg, I realized I had some work ahead of me. And, you know, we started a friendship that day. And, you know, uh, up until even after he retired, he was a kind of a mental trainer of sorts for our softball program and just a dear, dear friend. I was with him. Uh, you know, we went out to lunch uh, one day, came to breakfast the next day with my wife and I. My wife's a women's basketball coach. And I, I, we were with him a week before he passed away, going through all of his photos from, from a great trip that he had uh, visiting his family out in, in Oregon this summer. Excellent. Excellent. Talk about some of your, I didn't realize you guys started the same day. That's great. So, yeah, we, we started the same day. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was a tough time for him really at the time because he was coming up from Foxcatcher and it was it was shortly after, you know, his buddy Dave, you know, had gotten killed down there and, and all of that. But, uh, you know, he came to Lehigh. We had a great tradition and certainly uh, Greg made it even better. And, you know, he, he brought the best out of his his student athletes and he didn't mind sharing a bunch of stuff with us as well. Definitely. Great, man. Talk about some of the lessons that you got from him and just some of your coaching philosophies in general? Yeah, you know what? Uh, we worked together, you know, uh, back early in, in our careers, back 95, 96, 97. And we honestly, we created a think tank. <laughs> and all we talked about was, uh, was leadership and developing a championship mindset. And, you know, during that time period, we had Greg working with us uh, uh, Kevin Higgins was the head football coach then who went on to the Detroit Lions for a little bit and is now the associate head coach down at, at Wake Forest. Chris Marshall, who's in our Hall of Fame as a swim coach. And we just talked shop once a week and we were religious about it. And, you know, honestly, for us and for the softball program, really things have boiled down from all of that time kind of within our program with the culture that we're trying to, to really teach really boils down to three simple things. We ask our players to do the right thing. Once they do that right thing, look to the next right thing to do and, and do that. Some of that is education because not everybody knows what the right thing to do is, you know, whether it be a technique thing, but, you know, we're talking about everything, whether it's holding the door open for the janitor you know, or it's working on the, your technique on, on uh, your bunt for a hit, you know, so figure out what the right thing is, do the right thing, and then next, next, do the next right thing. After that, whatever you're doing, be present, all right? Uh, yeah, that's so, so important, you know, be in a frame of mind where you're in the moment, and if, if you're talking to somebody, make that person feel like they're the most important person you know, that, uh, that, that you've ever met, you know, and that's a hard thing to do, especially in this world where all of our kids are on their phones really all the time, you know, you know, we've instituted a policy that they love that, you know, they leave their phones in the locker room before they come out to practice. And at first that was a hard thing to do, but they love it. When we go on away trips, you know, we haven't put their cell phones, we got a, a cell phone uh, box that we put everything in, when we're at dinner, there's no, nobody's on a cell phone, not a coach, not a player. You know, I actually last year or two years ago, I think I pulled the cell phone away, away from the bus driver because he was part of our group, you know, and just kind of being totally present 
and giving the best at, at whatever you're doing at that moment is just really, really critical. And then the, the last principle, you know, and, and Greg, you know, his team's really, you know, bought into this as well. It sounds kind of corny, you know, but we, we ask our players, our team, just to love one another, you know, with, with their whole heart. You know, it doesn't mean that you're going to like everything that your teammate does, but, uh, you know, treat them with respect and, and dignity. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about the golden rule and, you know, doing to others as you would have done unto them. And kind of the corollary of that is that do unto others as, as kind of how they would want to be treated, you know, which is a little bit different. So how I would want you to treat me maybe a little bit different than how you'd want to treat yourself. And that really gets into the relationship piece and, and getting to know each other. So I know that I rambled a little bit there. It's really three simple principles that we've boiled everything down to and we ask our players to buy into that. Uh, that's great. So, so many great points right there. You can make a, a huge lesson, a big long hour about each one of those things. Like the love, that really, um, that goes beyond the like, right? Because you might not like the person in the moment, but you still love them. It transcends the, the like. It's not just superficial. Oh, hey, I'm happy with you. You're happy with me. It's sometimes we're not happy with each other, but we love each other and we're going to push through. Um, and I like, I like how you said there, it's do, treat other people the way they'd want to be treated, right? Like I love pizza, but when I go fishing, I don't put pizza on the hook. I put the That's bait right. on the hook. I wouldn't eat the bait, but they wouldn't eat the pizza. That's exactly right, Gene. You're exactly right on that. So that, that's a really good point. And even when you said, be with it, be in the present moment, right? The past is history. The future is a mystery. The present's a gift, right? That's the only time that really exists. Yeah, and there's even a when great... you say that, I, you know, my mind starts wandering. It's like, yes, get back to it. The person you're with is the most important person in the world right now. Yeah, like, and there's absolutely no question about it. And, you, you know, I, I think that a lot of what uh, we have learned at Lehigh you know, o over the years is that you've got to be able to manage a lot. Being a head coach at a division one institution, it's a big job. It's like running a small business, you know, for sure. So, you know, my days, I break them up. I start my days generally about five in the morning or so. Now I go to bed really, really early, but we're really organized and, you know, we keep track of everything. We've got everything kind of segmented out. But once I get into, you know, the, the latter part of my day and afternoon on, it's, it's time about to really focus on relationships and being present with people. And, um, you know, I, I've got a staff that is absolutely fantastic at, at doing that as well. You know, and we, we've got players that have bought into that. And, you know, we got really, really lucky very early in the recruiting process. We got some tremendous people back in the, the early 90s. We thought we were really, really good coaches. We just happened to have great, great players in the program who were great human beings. And honestly, what happens there is what I call the law of attraction. Great kids attract great kids. So, you know, if, if you're an all-league, uh, regional all-American pitcher and you know, somebody who's really, really good is in for the recruiting process. You know, those good, good people, they attract themselves to, to the great people that you have here. And, you know, we've been very, very fortunate um, just to get to attract great people. And I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, from a, a competitive standpoint, you know, the better the player, the better you are as a coach. Definitely. And I know school like Lehigh, it's very high level academics and very high level athletics. So you're dealing with kids that they got to be firing on all cylinders all the time. Talk about that. It may be some of the biggest mental hurdles that you see as a coach. Yeah. You know what? I, I'm pretty good buddies with uh, the softball coach down at Alabama, uh, Pat Murphy, and he's a, a great, great guy. And we were out at a recruiting event one time. We're talking shop and you know, we we're talking about practice planning and kind of what we what, what we do, what he does. And, you know, I was really excited because I felt like I was going to learn something. And the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, Alabama's practice is one of the top teams in the country. And our practices are really pretty close, pretty similar in kind of the content. But the one big difference is that he has the luxury of being able to go three, three and a half hours, you know, with, with his kids. 
start to finish, we've got to be done in two hours. And that's not because our kids don't want to be there, but they've got group projects for their finance class, or, you know, they've got an engineering lab that they've got to write up, or, you know, they've got some sort of pre-med program that they've got to get to at 7.30 at night. And so, you know, what we have learned over the years is that we've got to take our time together, make the most of it, but we've got to help them because if, you know, if our world, if softball or basketball or wrestling or whatever is the most important thing, and, you know, we focus entirely on that and don't deal with them as a, you know, as a complete human being, then, you know, the wheels will come off really pretty quickly. So we've got to make sure, you know, that they're going in a great direction from an academic standpoint. The softball stuff will kind of take care of itself, but then we've got to make sure that they're ready to go with all of their relationships. If their relationships with their roommates aren't good, or if they're having problems at home, or if they're having a boyfriend, girlfriend problem, or whatever, you know, they're not going to practice very well. And if they don't practice very well, they're not going to play in the games very well. And, you know, and if they don't play in the games very well, I don't look good. And it's all about me. I want to look good. You know, exactly. I'm just kidding about that, but it's a very holistic approach yeah. that all coaches have to have to take. And, you know, that's a little bit more in vogue now, you know, but honestly, we've been doing that here at Lehigh, you know, both my wife and I for the past 30 years. Right. And I would assume all the greats really of all time probably been doing that. Maybe they didn't talk about it, but a lot of people don't realize just how much maintenance it is with the kids, not just the X's and O's of, of competing, but like you said, the total picture and really bringing out their best, making sure their mental and emotional well-being is, is solid. I mean, right now, during this whole COVID time, we know those numbers are, are bad. They're poor with anxiety, depression. So it's, it's hard. Kids are battling. There's no question about it. And, you know, we started this, um, you know, as soon as the pandemic hit in the middle of March, you know, we've got these very, it's very religious how we do them. We got these Friday FaceTimes and we do them in 15 minute increments with our players just to make sure that we're connecting, you know, just like we're connecting right now, Gene, in a, in a very real way. Different than a phone call, you know, I mean, it's not the same as being in person, but we try to, to make sure that we're having that, that high touch, that one-on-one -on -one experience with them. And, you know, a lot of times we don't talk about softball at all. You know, we're talking about, you know, everything from baking Christmas cookies to kind of how their little sister's doing. And those things, they end up paying dividends in the long run. And, you know, the, the coach, you know, who was really, really great at this, if you ever read any of the testimonials about him, was John Wooden, the, the great basketball coach at UCLA. If you read any of the stuff that he wrote, he was all about the relationships and I mean, he was very, very demanding and he had high expectations, but his players knew the same thing about him. And, you know, all, I think all the coaches that are out there that are worth their salt, you know, they've learned from some of the best. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be, to be surrounded early in my career with some coaches that were, you know, that were fantastic. And, you know, they, they really taught me that a championship experience is not just about winning championships, championships it's about making sure that the student athlete has a championship experience that they're treated as well as that they can they can be treated right and even when we search our own memory banks usually the coaches that had the biggest impact on us weren't necessarily the best technical coaches that we've had or the most successful as athletes it was the ones that really cared about us as people I remember thinking as an athlete that coach I would do whatever they asked me to do you know, run through the wall, you run through the wall, but it's because you know they're looking at the complete person. It's not just produce on the field. Yeah, and, and that really ties into you know, one of uh, Greg Strobel's greatest philosophies. He, he really believed that a person's best coach was himself, that we are there to be the steward, to be the assistant, to help them learn how to coach themselves because the fact of the matter is that he was never on the mat with them. You know, he was on the side. Fact of the matter is, I, in my career, I've never taken, you know, one at bat, not fielded one ground ball, not made one pitch, you know, and, and the more that we can get them to the point where they can coach themselves and they can perform in that championship moment, um, 
you know, that's the secret to success. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was, I was just talking about this at that Wisconsin baseball coaches convention. I was saying you really based like exactly what you said, every athlete is a coach in a certain sense because they're coaching themselves. And you basically need to be two things, which is almost paradoxical. You need to be your own best friend and your own harshest critic. And sometimes, and usually athletes are more one than the other. So they need to learn how to shift their weight. And it, sometimes it's balanced, but more often than not, it's finding the optimal point. If you're having a bad day, you shift to being your best friend. If you, you start to get tired, bored, lazy, peer pressured, that's when you shift more to the, the your harshest critic. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, you know what? Uh, it, it's honestly one of the most important uh, things that we do as coaches here at Lehigh, but that we ask our players to do. You know, you need to be, um, in terms of knowing the right thing and kind of how to either even to treat yourself, you know, you, you've got to know what I call a, a word compunction. You know, compunction really is, you know, being harsh on yourself, but not doing it in a way that is uh, overly self-critical. So each day you've got to evaluate how you did moment to moment, you know, and hey, if you didn't do something really well, let's figure out a way to do it a little bit better tomorrow, learn from that, and then file it away. Like you said, Gene, at the beginning, the past is in the past, the future, you don't know what it's going to be about. To be in the present, you've got to learn a little bit from your past. You got to hope for the future, but you got to live in the present. And, you know, if if you're too hard on yourself, then that's no good because you don't have a positive attitude. So I love what you're saying there about, you know, finding the balance of being your own harshest critic and being your own, own, own best friend. And, and honestly, right now, kind of given the pandemic, I think that the coaches need to err on the side of, of encouraging their student athletes to be their own best friend, because, you know, let's, let's face it, they haven't been able to compete and the world that they're in right now isn't a great one. Absolutely. And thinking about, even then you look at the mental health, usually anxiety is thinking about the future, the pre or, Anx yeah, anxiety is the future. Or I guess either right. you could think about the past could be anxious about that or sure. you know, depression, thinking about the future too. It's a hopelessness. The orientation is usually outside. So it's, yeah. and I, I agree with you really during this time, it's gotta be that encouragement. You can do it. You still can improve. What's the opportunity here? What's the silver lining? How do I make the lemonade out of the lemons? Right. It, 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 it's really funny. And, and, you know, I'm not even sure what to make of it. We had a, a fall that was interrupted a bunch of times from, you know, not through our players' faults, but from COVID environment, from the COVID environment at, at Lehigh. So we would start up, we would do a few workouts and then we would be off for a little bit. We'd do a few workouts and then we would be off for a little bit. And I felt, and my assistants felt like, boy, we need to be really nice to them because, you know, they haven't been able to practice at all. We can't really critique them too much. But you know, I, I feel like you can still critique as long as they know that you care and that you're there for them. You can critique. It just has to come from the right spot. Absolutely. And if you have that open line of communication that you have with the teammates where they know you care, I remember having coaches tell me that. It's like, look, when I'm coaching you, I'm going to be hard on you. Don't get upset with that. Get, a, get upset when you don't hear from me. When I don't you're talk to you, that's the time to worry. But if I'm, if I'm riding you a little bit, it means I care. Yeah, no, no question about it. And, you know, my assistant coach, Dave Bender, who, you know, used to be uh, an assistant coach over at Hunter and Central for wrestling for a number of uh, years. He, you know, he, he always says, if I stop talking to you, that's when you, what, if I stop being hard on you, uh, that's when you really need to worry. And, you know, there, there's a balance there, but, you know, the, the old adage is, is that, you know, that you really need to let them know that you care. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, before you can, can really, um, really get after it with them. Absolutely. Such great information, coach. Thank you so much. How do we send more people to Lehigh softball, Lehigh sports website, social media? We could link them all in the show notes. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're uh, you know, at Lehigh softball is our Twitter. I think it's at Lehigh softball too, for kind of the, the Instagram. We love getting you know, followers and, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the recruiting that we're doing today is, is being done over social media, you know, for sure. And, and so, you know, lehighsports.com, I mean, Lehigh is a wonderful, wonderful place. You know, I've been very, very fortunate to have been here 
you know, for the past uh, past 30 years. And God willing, I'll be here for a lot more years. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for you. And we'll make sure we link, I'll double check all those sites, get them right, and I'll put them in the show notes. Gene, you're the best. This was really fun to, to get to meet and know you a little bit. And, and good luck to you and keep up the great work. Thank you. You too. God bless you, coach. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. All right.